Hi everyone, it's Robin and welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a new and improved slipcover hack on how to fake the look of an expensive slipcover. So I made a video a long time ago on this subject and it has been very popular here on my channel. However, I recently started doing things a slightly different based on a tip from one of my viewers. And I wish for the life of me that I could remember who told me this idea. I have looked and looked because I really would love to be able to give credit where credit is due but I can't find it and I feel really bad about that. But So just remember this is not an original idea. It is something that someone suggested to me and it has been such a game changer for me that I just want to share it with the world so that is what I'm going to do today. So these days when I want to slip cover a sofa I break it down into two separate steps. The first step is the base and the second is the cushions. Now the base of the sofa I pretty much deal with the same way I always have. I'll use three big pieces of fabric to cover the arms and the front of the sofa and I basically just kind of fold and tuck, possibly pin it in place if I think it needs it, and it pretty much stays where I put it, hassle-free. The cushions, on the other hand, is where I've made the biggest change, and that is going to be the focus of today's video. To cover the cushions, I now make a simple, easy-to-sew pillowcase for each cushion. Now this method does require some very simple basic sewing skills but I assure you it is easy to do and oh my goodness what a difference this makes. Gone are the days where you have to readjust your slip cover all the time. It is fantastic. So for this project I went to Walmart and I picked up some gray and white ticking stripe fabric. Now my sofa is a nine foot sofa. It has six cushions that I needed to cover. So I picked up about nine yards, maybe a little bit more than that. And I pretty much used all of it. Of course, I've got some scraps left over that I can use for other things, but majority of the big pieces I did use. Um, so then from there, I simply one cushion at a time sewed a pillowcase for all six of the cushions that go on my sofa. This project went together very quickly in less than like a couple hours. And that was with distractions from people and from dogs. So I was very impressed with how easy this was. So let me walk you through the steps that I took so you can see for yourself how quick and easy it is to do. And you can change up your slipcover game as well. Let's get started. So we're basically gonna make a pillowcase and I like to wing it so I'm gonna show you how I do that. First, start with two pieces of fabric, right sides together, match any patterns, and make sure the fabric is larger than your cushion. Place the cushion on top of the fabric so that the fabric can wrap up and around the sides of the cushion to about the halfway mark plus an extra inch for a seam allowance. Repeat the process on the top and the opposite side of the cushion, trimming the fabric as needed to make it fit. At the bottom edge of the cushion, you're going to leave a good 8 to 10 inches of space for folding and pinning later on. Once the fabric is trimmed to size, pin the two pieces of fabric together along the top and two sides of the fabric. As you can see, one side of my cushion has a curved edge that wraps over the top of the sofa arm. If your cushions are the same way, for now mark a spot on the fabric 1 or 2 inches below where the flat edge ends with a pencil. Pin the edge together and only sew down to that mark. Then it is time to sew the two pieces of fabric together. So using a straight stitch, sew along the top three sides following your marks if you have any. Remove the pins and check the fit by slipping the cushion inside the pillowcase. Make sure the fabric is nice and snug along your stone edges. If it's not, it's easy to make adjustments. As you can see, I have one side that is a little bit big, but it's an easy fix. Basically, I pinch the fabric together along the side so that the fabric is centered in the middle of the cushion, and then I pin the two layers together. I'll repeat this process along the whole length of the cushion. Then with a pencil, I'll mark a sewing line, I'll remove the cushion, and re-sew this seam. 
I will once again check the fit and if everything is looking good, I will then take a pair of scissors and remove all the excess fabric, leaving behind a quarter of an inch seam allowance on all three sides. This next step that I took is completely optional, but I like to box my corners. And to do that, I pinch the fabric together at the corner of the cushion and pin in place. Then I will take a pencil and mark a line from the top of the cushion to the bottom. I will repeat the process on the opposite corner of the cushion and then remove the cover. Then I sew a straight line along my marks on each corner. I will check the fit once again and if it looks good I will remove the excess fabric leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. At this point I have a cover that fits the top and sides of my cushion. However, the cushions that have a curved edge need just a little bit more work. I start out by adding pins through the cover along the curved edge every couple of inches on both sides of the cushion. This will keep it in place as I work on it. This next part is a little scary, but I'm going to cut just a couple inches of the fabric on the top completely off along the curb. Careful not to cut off too much, it's just enough to make this area easier to work with. I am then going to go back and cut even a smaller amount off the back section of the fabric. I do it this way to ensure that if one cut is too close, the longer section can save the day. Then starting on one end of the cushion, I pinch the two layers of fabric together in the middle of the cushion side and pin into place. I repeat the process working my way along the whole edge of the cushion. Once I have all the pinning done, I'll take a scissor and cut a couple slits along the curved area, stopping about three quarters of an inch from where I want to sew my seam. This helps relieve some of the tension on the curve and makes it easier to sew. I then like to draw in a sewing line with a pencil. I'll then remove the cushion and sew along that line that I marked. Once that is done, I'll replace the cushion, check for fit, and if everything looks good, I will trim the seam allowance to a quarter of an inch. If you chose to box the corners of your cover, you're going to want to take the time to follow the steps to box this corner as well, and that should finish off your project. At this point, you should have one cover sewn, and the square one should look like this. And the curved cover should look like this. To finish the bottom edge of the cushion, make sure the cover is on nice and flat and then starting on one corner, fold the fabric basically like you would when wrapping a present. Fold in one corner, then fold up the bottom and use a safety pin to hold it in place. Repeat the process on the opposite corner. And finally add two more pins along the length of the bottom of the cushion for good measure. Now of course in case you didn't want to use safety pins you could get a little bit more elaborate, add some velcro, some snaps, or even install a zipper but as you can see here once all the pins are in place this cushion is not going anywhere and all that extra effort is really not necessary so now that the cushions are covered we need to deal with the base of the sofa which is very very easy to do and my method for dealing with this section of the couch like i mentioned before has not changed at all i still use three large pieces of fabric to cover the arms and the front of the sofa and I just fold, tuck, sometimes use a pin to kind of hold things in place. Um, I'm not going to get into detailed instructions on how I do that today because this video is already getting very, very long. And I'd like to, you know, keep it rather short. But if you would like detailed instructions on how I do cover the base of the sofa, go back and check out the original slipcover hack video. I will make sure to link that down below for you. And that will give you detailed instructions on how I do it. And like I said before, I use the same method today that I did way back then.
So I hope that this video has been an eye-opener for you just like it was for me and I highly recommend giving this method a try if you need a slip cover. I really think you're going to like it. I love the fact that I now know I can completely change the look of my sofa very easily with just a little effort and have all the benefits of a real slip cover at a fraction of the time that it would take me to make a real slip cover. So at this rate I will probably be making a slip cover for like every season and I'm pretty sure that's probably what will end up happening. <laughs> Alright so that is going to be it for me today. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. I appreciate it. I'm excited to know if you like this idea. If you did give it a thumbs up or leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think and if you're going to give this idea a try or not. If you're new to this channel please consider hitting the subscribe button. I do lots of DIYs, decorating and thrifting here on my channel. And to all of my faithful friends watching today, I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you again very soon in my next video. Bye now.